Howard Ladder. My next question is, um, um, you, I, I've, I've really like uh, outwardly admired how you approach the hobby, and I'll explain what I mean. Like you, there's a lot of guys, especially in you know guys that are kind of in the public a little bit, who will use their platform to try to like inflate what they're buying, and they'll talk about what they're buying, and they'll get overly excited. You have taken a little bit different approach where you're kind of like privately buying it. And it seems like you're doing that because I'm just guessing, but it's, you're having more fun with it. Kind of like keeping it to yourself. Can you talk about that strategy for yourself and maybe how you think it's paid off for you more in the long run? Well, there's, there's a couple of parts of that. So if you're buying anything that has any level of scarcity, right. And you think you're on to something, I don't want anybody to know about that. Right, because it's first of all, it's just going to cause me to have to pay more, or I'm going to miss out on cards. Right, it is, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But you know, it's it's pretty hard to be that wrong right now on something. You know, so um, so I don't really want people to know if I think that there's something that's a deal out there, or that that you know I might be onto something. Um, and the flip side is, if I pay a ridiculous amount of money for a card, which I I'm tend to do sometimes. <laughs> Frankly, like, I don't really want to know. I don't want people to know that I just spent whatever, you know, like, because partly it's a, it's a little bit embarrassing, but it, it's also like, I, I, you know, here's the thing is I know Rob Go and, and I, this isn't to talk shit about him, but I would never in a million years have done what, what he did and gone out and tell the world I bought that card. Right. It was just, it was just, I never, I wouldn't want anyone to know that. And like, it kind of fucked everyone else that wanted to buy a mantle. Like, you know, you know, if you were out there trying to like wanted to buy a mantle, like, like the day after that, you you know, and, and you're screwed like, and since then, right. So it's a combination of, of all of that. Um, and, um, and then depending on what it is that I'm buying, I'll like slowly start to, to fill in people, right? Like I have one guy who I'm really, really close with and we'll often buy deals together or we'll look at stuff together. And then, you know, it's kind of like the, the, outward like circle of friends and, and stuff like that. But once I start getting priced out of stuff, you know, then I'm more than happy to sort of tell the world what I've been buying and just talk about it. But um, I've been pretty open that non-sport cards in general, I think are, are massively undervalued just because um, there's just not that much out of like the, the scarcity of non-sport cards compared to sport cards um, is so disproportionate. And, um, you know, and I wasn't saying anything about it when I was buying it like towards the, like, you know, in, in August, September of last year. But now, like, there's enough people are on it, and it's fine. You know, Jimi Hendrix and Bob Marley and Bob Dylan and Led Zeppelin and all that stuff, which is, like, it's hardly a secret. But, man, when I first started buying that stuff, like, nobody was buying that. It was dirt, dirt cheap. Um, and then now I'm getting I'm getting priced out of, of all the auctions anyway. So yeah, There's been a couple private deals that I was in the middle of where you were involved, and I was like, dude, this guy knows what he's doing over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help him get this deal because this, this guy knows what he's doing. He's buying stuff that I have. This is smart. <laughs> well, that, that, that's not a, it's not a bad strategy at all. Just see what you guys are buying and, and, you know, just try to ride your coattails. Yeah. We try to hide that as much as we can. Same, same way as you. Like we don't want to have to. <laughs> well, Chris knows, you know, I, 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 w I won't blow up the spot even more, but I found out Chris had a card that I really wanted. And I was like, Hey, I'm just going to text you every day for the next six months until you sell it to me. And I, eventually I felt bad and I stopped texting him. <laughs> Yeah, because she, Christina made him stop. <laughs> Eventually, I stopped, but I did text him. I, I was probably a good 30 or 40 texts before I finally let up, and I was like, okay. I was like, all right. So, no, nah, that's, that's how true collector rolls, man. That's how yeah, true like, collector rolls. You got you to gotta bug them, but you don't, you know, you got to like find that line of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, every, every time I would add like one more card to the deal, it was like I picked <laughs> four cards and five cards and six cards. Then there was like a case in there with the six cards. Yeah, it it did get enticing, Josh. I will say I, that. I, I would imagine, like the math, the math definitely made sense. You know, it's yeah, yeah. It did, it did. Imagine everything you love about the hobby in the palm of your hand, an entire store at your fingertips. Everything you need to know about cards is within your grasp. Unlock the secrets of the hobby, plus so much more. You don't have to imagine anymore. It's here. Card Ladder. Get the app today.